after God had finished making me, he must have said, I was showing off. Because... You're welcome back to my youtube channel where all we do is fashion so today we're making the palazzo trouser you saw on the thumbnail and that bikini top and i'm just going to hop right into it but for then you're welcome back to my youtube channel for my returning subscribers and if you're new over here thank you so much for stopping by please do also hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get posted on when i make new videos with that said, the first thing you need to do is cut the front part of your trouser. This fabric is actually a cotton fabric, pure cotton. You see this place where you have an um, English finishing? That's where you place your tape when you want to you measure the yards. Like you want to get how many yards the fabric is. This is where you place your tape over here like this. But if you want to get the length of your fabric, you want to know um, how many the length is because most... Um, English fabric come in length 60 white stuff like Ankara and lace come in 45 or 50 so let's just check how many this cotton fabric is how many the length is rather so I'll place my tape here you place it on the first part where you see this English finishing all the way to the other part where you see the other English finishing that distance between the two English finishing is the length of the fabric okay I hope that's clear what I have here already is 60 so I'm just going to use my tape to check the remaining excess so I have extra 10 inch I don't know if you can see this so you guys this is where my first measurement stopped and I have extra 10 inch so basically this cotton fabric is by 70 quite a lot of fabric yeah that's a lot so let's just hop into the tutorial i don't want you guys to be seeing my face you get distracted so i'm just going to take my face off this camera so that you focus the first thing you do is fold your fabric into two as i have done then the next thing is to mark out the length of your trouser the length of this trouser is 47 then i added extra two inches for hemming and seaming which is 49 and that's what i'm marking right now after marking the length of the trouser you go ahead and mark the cardinal points like your waistline your hip line the crotch depth line the knee line and then you're done with that so my hip line is eight inches from my waist as you can see and then to get your crotch step line i use the standard which is 11 inches then i added the half inch seaming allowance so i marked 11.5 inches for my crotch depth line it's quite difficult to label the lines on this fabric that's why i'm not going to be laboring it so if you have any confusion you can go back to my video i thought how to make short i think that video is quite explanatory i did it on a pattern paper as well it will help you to understand this one better okay so i've marked my waistline my hip line my crotch step line and then um, my knee point so now next thing you do come to that crotch depth yeah the third line come to that crotch depth line you're going to go in by 2.5 inches this is for the front okay and as you can see i've marked it and i'm trying to connect it all the way to the waist to be very honest i do not even think i need to be explaining what i'm doing because it's quite self-explanatory yes guys take a pause and hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to this channel it's not nice please do that now and like the video as well so remember i told you that you can decide to curve 
your crotch depth or you can decide to leave it straight well this time around i decided to curve it so that you actually see that there's really little or no difference when it is in either ways i made sure i highlighted that in my previous video please go and watch that video so that you'll not be confused because I, I ain't gonna be talking much in this video now go to that knee point and go in by one inch as you've seen me do and then just connect it to the crotch depth line that's it so this one inch thing by the knee is to give you that slant that your trouser is supposed to have yes yes guys now i'm just going to trace um from that knee point to the hem of my trouser i've done that i'm so sorry this chalk is not clear enough i don't know what to do now to mark the measurement for my waist my waist circumference is 28 i'm just going to divide 28 by 4 it will give me 7 7 plus 1 inch in allowance is 8 and i'll mark 8. do not place your tape in the wrong place when it comes to that waistline and the hip line you have to be very careful place your tape where you see me place mine all right the hip circumference is 42 you divide 42 by 4 you get 10.5 plus 1 inch swing allowance is 11.5 i've marked it and connected to the waistline already oh my gosh i actually forgot to highlight the upper tie but not to worry it's quite easy just mark two inches after your crotch depth and that's your upper tie now the circumference for my tie is 28 now i'm going to divide by two you already know why i'm just going to take a quick break to show you why now divide 28 by 2 will give you 14 i'm just going to mark 14 right there plus my allowance of course so for this kind of palazzo i'm just going to extend the width for my hip all the way to the hem of the trouser that's the wideness i need for this trouser so it's just going to be fitted only on the waist and the hip and then slightly loose from the tie and then wider at the hem that's how this palazzo is going to be so i think i'm basically done i'm just going to trim out and then place on the back piece simply place the front panel directly on the back piece then you go to that crush dead line and extend by one inches I actually extended by 1.5 because i noticed that one inch was actually too tight for me so i used 1.5 this time around yes and that's basically the only thing you need to do for the back every other thing you're just going to trace same with the front remember you extend the crotch that by one inch the waist the hip by one inch but every other thing remains the same the back panel is usually slightly bigger than the front panel that is the standard Shall for people that have bumble so i'm just going to cut out the unnecessary parts and just move to the sewing machine i'm going to be highlighting how to fix your invisible zipper so if that's something you've been struggling with you may want to stay to the end of this video now look at that my back panel is wider than my front panel and if you're making this pants for someone bigger or someone who is very healthy on the behind then you may want to increase the length of the back by one inch now i'll create the band my band is going to be two inches for the length and then 
the weight will be the measurement of my waist circumference very very easy now my waist circumference is 28 i'm going to add two inches allowance for the zipper and that's it for the band the depth for this band is two inches i think i've said that earlier i'm just going to cut out and my band is ready now to couple the pants we'll start with the front piece i already went ahead and then run a stitch on that crotch dead if you notice i also notched um areas on intervals this is because it will help me to iron flat see how flat it looks after ironing yeah that's the essence of notching it now i'll move to the back piece first thing i want to do on the back piece is attach my invisible zipper which i'm going to be taking you through so one trick i do when i attach my invisible zipper which is actually very very safe for beginners when i want to show someone how to attach an invisible zipper this is the safest trick to use firstly you're going to run a stitch on the edge of both sides like attach this zipper normally and then this is the result you have now once you've done it this way it's easier to just achieve that very very almost invisible effect okay now what you do to get that you're just going to open your zipper after opening your zipper you're going to open to the very extreme that tiny teeth for the zipper all right this is not clear i'm going to show you on the sewing machine how to do that let's go all right for those of us that are making use of the manual machine like this kind of machine um there are two things you can either use your invisible footer for this but if you don't know have it at the moment then this trick is definitely for you after running that first stage we are going to open the teeth i think this is clear just bend it the way you see me do on the screen once you've done that you're going to take it to your sewing machine and just run a stitch very very close to the teeth once you you're doing that make sure to be very very careful so that you don't climb on the teeth the moment you climb on the teeth your zipper will start having issues that's why most people after attaching their invisible zipper it doesn't take long and it gets bad especially for those of you that want to be sewing and selling if you know you want to be sewing and selling ready to wear piece you have to make sure your zips are trustworthy if your zipper is not trustworthy your client may lose interest and you do not want that so please make sure that you do not climb the teeth of your zipper so that you be confident when you wear your dress out all right so close to the teeth and even if it take you ages let it take you ages so long as it comes out nice do not be in a hurry just take your time do it slowly and make it as neat as neatly as possible enjoy see how almost invisible the zip is now that part where you can still see the zip at the remaining parts i'm just going to close with the sewing machine yeah iron it flat to give us that very neat effect to give your zipper that nice finishing you're going to turn to the wrong part of the dress like you see stitch on the same line where you attach the zip all the way to the crotch depth now look at that we're done with that zipper and i'm loving every bit of it see how neat it is just go ahead and iron flat and you're good to go to put this together i'm just going to 
attach the front to the back panel how do i do that remember i added extra one inch for seaming allowance i'm just going to take out that one inch at every single point the back piece as usual will be wider than the front piece so what you do just make sure you hold both sides equally bring the front piece and the back piece make them equal before running your stitch okay then do the same for the other side the excess fabric will be on the back and that's for the butts and when you run that stitch you're ready to go that one inch you added just take it out okay and we're done after that attach your band and make sure you iron your trouser after ironing put it up for sale put it on that mannequin put it on that body snap it and put it up for sale my dear sit back and wait for the demand of that dress <laughs> that one inch we agreed to take out i already took it out my waist is 28 and i'm just cross checking and what i have is actually 28 my hip is 42 and what i have is 42 so i'm actually good to go make sure you always do that while you sew don't just assume that the measurements are accurate okay always reassure yourself now i'll just go to that point and close it up as well and we're done we're basically done so the next part of this video i mean the part b will be how i cut and sew that bikini top so take that break you need eat that food take that chilled water and stick around for the part two and you guys where is my thumbs up where is my thumbs up please do also give this video a thumbs up stick around for the part two okay ciao